The meeting is now called to order. Can we please all stand for the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mrs. Burke? Here. Mr. Sakala? Here. Mrs. Dye? Here. Mrs. Marinelli? Here. Mr. Mandela? Here. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meeting of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Cedar Grove Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be advertised by having the date, time, and place thereof posted on bulletin boards in the district, published and or transmitted to the Verona Cedar Grove Times and Star Ledger newspapers, filed with the township clerk, and posted on the district's website. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, the meeting is open to the public for comments for items on the agenda. Seeing none, I close that portion of the meeting. Good evening, board members. I uh, hope everyone had a good week. Um, just checking on any committee uh, reports. I'll go. Okay, um, I'll be brief. I attended the South End FSA meeting. Um, just a couple items. They're all very much looking forward to uh, the upcoming break. Um, follow it, followed by uh, prep the ask testing. Um, they've been preparing for that. Um, discussion on the field trips. Now's the time when um, all the younger grades are going on the field trips. There's actually one today for the third grade. Mr. Sakala attended. It was very fun. a great day today, which was good because it was a rain date because it had rained on the originally scheduled date. Um, and they're working hard on their fundraising. Um, they had their clothing out. They've introduced a whole new um, clothing line, the Panther clothing line. They have some really neat things. So you guys probably see that on your email. Um, you know, they're working hard with the scripts and they have a lot of other things going on um, and just looking up to, looking to finalize the uh, end of the school year. Hey, where do you purchase the uh, clothing line? Where? Um, the, yeah, it's a South End. It, the, their order forms. Remember, I, think I don't have kids there anymore, so you got to fill me in on these things. Um, well, we usually get the uh, emails, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> a South End people. But I think that there was on the was it on the website? Yeah. Oh great. Mm -hmm. Oh cool. Oh great. I got to look. I yeah, they stuff. have some really neat things. All sparkles, all the stuff. Tank top, I don't we can want help you out. Well, like we'll have the airbrush tank top uh -huh. and brush stuff. They have some some. Some different different, different oh, items this year. It's not Cedar Grove Ware? No, no, yeah. Oh, okay. It is. But it's like blingy and airbrushed, and I don't know that. if you like the bling <laughs> tanks, but there's some nice things for spring. Okay. <laughs> and water bottles. Water bottles, umbrellas, <laughs> chairs <laughs> for games, you know, so, softball games, um, the chairs and stuff. They have some nice, some nice items for the men, too. And there was so no bling on the water bottles or the chairs. Or the right? chairs. Or the umbrellas. I like the umbrellas. Mm -hmm. I'm not Just asking check it out, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never asking that question again. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? I went to the uh, high school APT meeting last evening, and they're also uh, looking forward to um, spring break and all the fun things that are going to happen at the school afterwards. They're <laughs> looking forward to prom. They're looking forward to project graduation. Um, in terms of the APT, they're in discussions right now with Mr. Featherman about what they're going to be gifting to the high school uh, for this year, and it's going to probably include some some improvements that they need to complete the uh, black box theater. And um, there's also they're, they're also very excited about the Laramie project that just finished there and the um, Les Mis production that they did. Uh, and there was one other. Thing. Project graduation is uh, is almost done with their fundraiser. They're going to have one more fundraiser. It's going to be a um, a car wash, and that's going to come up. I think the week after spring break. I have to check on the date on that. Um, and the only other thing that they talked about was, uh, I guess, some of the things that we're going to hear tonight from the Triangle Group. There's been some um, some things put into place as a result of 
uh, some some discussions with the triangle group, and, and I guess we'll let them talk about that when, when it's their turn. That's about it. Okay. Mr. Mandela, just a segue from the Laramie Project in the Black Box Theater. I went to see it this weekend, and it really was just a phenomenal production. Um, you know, I really want to commend the administration, the staff, and mainly the students. It was a powerful um, play, and they did it such good justice. And the one student actually wrote the closing <coughs> act, but he was sick. He wasn't there. But he actually wrote the, the final scene, which wow. was just really... Um, awesome so it was definitely well worth it the black box theater is a great um intimate close theater but for that kind of production it was perfect because they were right there you were right in like right on stage with them i know i'm so disappointed i miss it i was away i missed that and les mis and i heard they were both no, really les mis was awesome great well. productions yeah. i'm disappointed that i missed it mr mandela i attended the rec board meeting at the beginning of april uh, it was very brief. Uh, let's see. The Memorial Day Parade, it's going to be the same route as last year. The fireworks are set for July 2nd with a rain date of July 3rd. Um, there was some discussion that um, the Panther Park bleachers weren't up to code and they had to do something with the top of the bleachers. And so uh, Ron Epps suggested uh, that we might want to take a look at our own high school bleachers. So I'm just passing that on. <laughs> no, I said I was. Wow. Yeah, I'm saying I'm sure That's they're fine. That's new news. <laughs> I said I'm sure they're fine. No, we haven't had discussions on that before. Um, enrollment for soccer is up over 20%. Last year there's 195 kids. This year there's 237. So that program is growing. Uh, the pool is celebrating its 50th year, and there was some discussion about um, having a, a day to celebrate, um, possibly for the members, but that's yet to kind of be worked out yet. Um, pool membership. Um, the, at this point is down compared to March of, well, at the time, March of last year. Um, but Ron Up said as soon as it got warm out, people would remember that they were supposed to join the pool and <laughs> that he was confident that more people would come. Um, and there was also some discussion about uh, the expansion of Panther Park. And then obviously since the meeting, everybody's seen in the news, it's been approved. Yay, it's being expanded. So good news for the town. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else? Good deal. Moving on the agenda, uh, this evening we have a presentation as uh, Mr. Sakala mentioned from the Triangle uh, training, uh, from the Triangle group. And for those of you in the community that may not be aware of what um, the board has been, um, or the administration has been working with the Triangle group, the Triangle group behind the scenes since the unfortunate incident in, um, Connecticut uh, with Sandy um, Hook schools and and everything that's been taking place unfortunately throughout the country um, the board received uh, many phone calls from uh, the community right after that incident just asking what the board's uh, plans were and if we were looking at different um, implementing different procedures or or what were what we were doing here in the in the school district and um, uh, with that, uh, the the group had reached out to Dr. Polis, and you know they started working on these procedures. Or the presentation we're going to see tonight is to talk about um, what um, I guess what we have implemented, what we should look at, and um, and areas like that. If I'm not explaining it correctly, um, correct me if I'm wrong um, when you're up here. But that was my understanding of what we're seeing tonight. Correct. So with that, I'd like to bring up. Um, the triangle um, or the group to and I know it's uh, Mr. Firon. Yes, Good sir. To see. I know you've been uh, busy. sort of starting, you know, been the liaison uh, right from the beginning and you approached Dr. Polis with this from the beginning and we thank you. Um, so we're welcome. No, yes, that's correct. Thank you. And thanks for the opportunity. And, uh, you know, I'm here to say that the um, the the biggest reason why I wanted to get involved, obviously, uh, you know, I have three children that go to Cedar Grove school systems. Sorry, and before you begin, I should have had you. You just need to state your name and your address, please. Sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, Bill Fearon, 87 Union Street in Cedar Grove. And uh, yes, I am a Cedar Grove resident. I do have uh, three kids that go to Cedar Grove school system. And uh, I, I have been doing school safety and training 
with my real job in, in law enforcement. I'm an active duty law enforcement officer, and uh, I've been doing that for 10 years. I've trained uh, thousands and thousands of police officers from the federal, state, local, and county levels, as well as military personnel, and I've been deemed a subject matter expert in school safety and security. So after the, uh, the Newtown incidents, like you said, uh, you know, I kind of ran into Dr. Polis and him, us having a little bit of a relationship, knowing each other through the school system. Uh, we started talking and I said I'd be willing to help in, in any way possible and that's how the kind of the talks evolved and uh, here we are tonight. Um, tonight what we're going to do is just give a little bit of a presentation on what we've done so far, what we're going to do and uh, you know kind of how we're looking to implement things and move forward. And you know before I get started I'd just like to say that the, the biggest thing when, uh, you know, the biggest thing that I felt was needed in order for a program like this to be successful was uh, cooperation and coordination. And uh, I have to tell you, it's, it's been phenomenal from, uh, from the local PD level to the administrators, to the teachers, to the school board, the, the cooperation and the, uh, you know, collaboration together has, has been absolutely phenomenal because that's really what you're going to need to succeed to prevent or mitigate a circumstance uh, like this, a tragic incident like this. All right, so I have a quick PowerPoint to, to uh, run through and we'll just um, start on that. All right, again, wh why are we doing this? Okay, because we want to uh, coordinate with the school district and we want to offer safety issues and safety reports that uh, we can kind of upgrade and put into use for the school system. Our goal is to facilitate, facilitate coordination efforts between at all, again, all levels, okay? What have we done so far? We've done walkthrough observations at all the schools. We've observed lockdown drills. We've submitted a report of uh, any type of safety or security you know, deficiencies or pitfalls that we kind of felt was there. We've trained the administration. We've done some training with the teachers and uh, the teachers, that's gonna go on, okay? The, uh, the teachers is going on the rest of this week. And we're here, basically, what we're looking to do is harden the target, you know, harden the school system, okay? Because, uh, like we said, you know, with the events in Newtown, we saw that, you know, you can do everything right and bad things can still happen. <clears throat> when we talk about rapid response, and again, listen, this is a subject that we, no one likes to talk about. This is something where, you know, tragedy in our schools, you know, bad people coming into our school systems to hurt our most prized commodity, okay, your, your children, our children, all right? And the whole history of rapid response for police officers really started in Columbine, all right? In Columbine back in 1999, you had two shooters enter a school, cause all sorts of damage, and the police department was basically crucified in the press because of the fact that they did what they were supposed to do at the time, all right? They basically pulled out, set a perimeter up, and called in for the SWAT team. And the, you know, the critical, the media there was saying, you know, y y these people were inside the school for a long period of time and you did nothing. And, and according to their protocols, they did everything that they were supposed to do. <coughs> now we fast forward to Newtown, okay? After Columbine, we had all this training put into law enforcement efforts as far as rapid response and, you know, diamond formations and other stuff that's been out there as far as law enforcement training and response. And now in Newtown, you still, even though law enforcement was trained, the school did everything right. They did their lockdown procedures perfectly. They, they had to be buzzed in and they were, but you still had all of these tragedies, all of this, this damage and carnage in Newtown because the subject just shot his way into the school and caused this type of damage. So, you know, this is what really, you know, kind of changes things for, you know, law enforcement and schools, okay? You know, Columbine changed things, the measuring stick for law enforcement. Newtown has to kind of change the measuring, stick for, the measuring stick for schools, all right? It has to basically, we're looking to harden the target. If we can delay that person from coming into our school to causing all this damage, then we give the police officers more time to get there and do what they're supposed to do, all right? Now, what is rapid response? Basically, it's law enforcement. You want to bring a lot of assets to that incident very, very quickly because the person basically wants to harm and injure innocent victims, okay? And bottom line is they're looking for a body count. So minutes count, seconds count. Law enforcement wants to get there as quickly as possible. 
when we talk about rapid response, we're taught, we usually talk about two, two things, a contact team, the first officers in, and then your rescue team, all right? And what we try to implore upon the teachers and, and the administrators is police officers in these types of situations, they have one job, to get in there and make contact with the shooter. They're in there basically to hunt that person down. Okay, and they're going to get in as quickly. They're not going to be nice, all right. They're going to you're going to have to uh, listen to them very, very carefully. But they're not there to carry on a conversation, all right. They're they're moving right towards all the chaos and right to the sounds of all the you know gunfire and the smoke and explosion. I don't know. And you know, just on behalf of law enforcement, I mean, you know, what you saw yesterday during the bombings in the, in the Boston Marathon. Okay, all the people running and then all the police officers running to it. That's that's our job, and that's their job and that's why we train to do all this stuff okay um, but that's what they're going to be doing all right and we've we've had conversations with the teachers and training with the teachers to understand that in these situations the officers are, are looking to save lives they're not they're, they're going to be moving forward they're not going to be polite to you at all they're going to be you know getting in there and they'll be coming in with rifles and all sorts of gear and tactical gear The rescue teams, the, the secondary group of officers that come in, now they're going to start maybe, you know, ask, answering questions and, and bringing victims out or assisting bringing first aid in and stuff like that. Now, all of a sudden, you know, but that contact team is initially going in, you know, hard and fast, and then the rescue team, now we can start to, you know, pull people out and, and ask questions and start the interview process and start the, you know, investigation, so to speak. before it happens and this is what we really like to talk about because you know these things there's always telltale signs okay when we talk about active shooters and we talk about um, stuff that happens bad in schools or a mall or a church or any anywhere there's always a telltale sign from from the from the person who's going to commit the crime right they're, they're rarely random acts they're planned to the last detail what the person's going to say, what he's going to wear, who he's going to encounter, what type of weapons he's going to bring in. All this stuff is planned to the last detail, all right? And we've tried and put uh, on notice with the teachers to be aware for these signs, okay? Be aware for these signs. And, and if you see something, say something, bottom line. Again, with, you know, as far as the teachers, you know, know your area. You know, p police officers and teachers, okay, um, they live in two different worlds. Poli um, police officers live in a world of, of gray area, okay? There's, they have SOPs and guidelines, but then everything kind of changes when you're talking to that person uh, on a car stop or whatever. Teachers are very, you know, they're, they're black and white, okay? If you get below a 70, you fail, you know, bottom line. If you didn't make the grade, that's it. There's all there is to it. An A is an A, and there's nothing deviation. And, you know, it's been, again, it's been a... Uh, it's been a challenge to you know, bring, bring everyone together as far as uh, getting people to understand each other's jobs. But again, you know, between the, the school board and the administrators and the teachers and the police department, the coordination's been great. And everyone's really trying to get the picture. And bottom line, I think everyone realizes that you know, the, the goal is to enhance safety in our schools for our children, bottom line, because that is our, you know, our most prized commodity. All right, and again, when we talk about, you know, stuff that we've done, okay, and what you can do to make yourself better, what we always say is, you know, that situational awareness is key, okay? Situational awareness for teachers and for principals and for, you know, janitors and for secretaries, that's all key, okay? It's all key, you know, the whole thing on mindset, okay? Bottom line is you have to understand that, you know, there are people out there that have bad intentions, okay? And we always got to be wary of that. You know, teachers, you know, after the Newtown, incident you know we're finding out that really instead of the police officers being the first line of defense the teachers and the school is the first line of defense and really that's what we've kind of tried you know to coordinate with all right now I just got to say again you know between uh, mr. mr. Kenny and and dr. Polis you know the the coordination has been excellent all right and and the Cedar Grove Police Department you know with sergeant Kennedy and uh, you know Mike Tower and Carol and Zajac they've been they've been absolutely phenomenal okay there's been a lot of steps already brought into to practice there are some things that Chris I know is researching uh, financially you know we've also you know one thing that we've done there was an issue with the teachers. They they uh, they basically wanted further instruction. What does all this stuff mean? Because we've been doing fire drills forever in schools, okay? And how many kids have died in school fires in the past 50 years? Not many, okay? There's been three, only three, 
And how many kids have been you know, injured or killed due to school violence or shooting? There's been hundreds, okay? So, but we practice fire drills over and over in agnosium, and everyone knows exactly what to do with a fire drill, but there's a little bit of confusion with lockdown drills and, and you know, evacuations and stuff like that. So we created, first thing we did was we created this, I handed one out to everyone. This is gonna go in every single classroom. Every teacher's gonna get, get this, just to make it simple, like a quick reference card for every teacher just to know exactly what we're doing, all right? Um, and what, what to do on different types of drills. We've also identified some things already, and I, and I have to say, again, the, the buy-in has been excellent from, from the teachers, administrators. Um, the big thing, and, and I've, I've fought this a lot when I've done training, again, at my real job with school boards and stuff, they, they don't see the need to have police officers in school or, or an armed person in school. Um, in Cedar Grove, again, I can tell you that they, they do take it serious, okay? When we do the training, they're, they're determined to, to do it right. They want to do the lockdown drill perfect, and they actually get, you know, you can see visibly upset when something goes wrong. But when we do the training, it always, if it, if it you know, identify something that went wrong and then we fix it right there and move on we've like you know when we made the school system better so the need to keep training and keep doing this stuff is uh is very very important you know what we've also done i know the school board's been supplied this we, what we've done is came up with this uh a, a 21 page program just on, uh, you know, like I said, on things that we can do to make better, and we've kind of tiered them down, and I won't bore you by going through over everything. We can go over this at a, at a later time or in another meeting or, a, a, you know, um, whenever. But, you know, I, I do think that there are a couple of things that should be addressed to really enhance security, and I know Chris has actually uh, researched that, but I can tell you that the number one thing that I put in there was, you know, the coordination between the police department and the school board has to be there, and, and I'm here to tell you that it is, okay? And, uh, you know, again, as a resident, I'm, I'm happy to see that, number one. And, you know, as someone coming in, um, I, you know, that would be the biggest frustrating thing for me if, if I saw this big, uh, you know, back and forth and, you know, the fighting between the two entities, but, but there is none at all. The, the cooperation has been great, and I think uh, the, the school board and the uh, administration, the teachers, and, and the police department should, should be congratulated for that. Um, I'll, I'll answer any questions that the board has. I'll open up to any questions or any issues that people have. Just so the board's aware, we're also, Bill's going to also plan on doing a parent night as well. Um, we're going to be looking at that uh, after the break. Um, so we'll be setting up a night. We'll be shooting out email and uh, the like to everybody. So we'll be doing a parent night at one of our buildings. Uh, and Bill will go over a multitude of things of what parents can do but also some of the things that we've done uh, internally as well with our teachers uh, and the like. So that's still yet to come. Uh, sure, We're, we're yeah. just trying to finish up, Bill's trying to finish up getting all the uh, uh, teachers meetings in uh, this week and we're trying to get all the teachers in service as much as possible. Um, yesterday we had a big, our big, bigger turnout. We had the middle school and high school together uh, at the high school and that went well. Um, and I can tell you too that from day one that when uh, Newtown hit, you know, the Cedar Grove police have been with us every step of the way. They've been with us, they've been visual, very visual within our buildings, uh, on our campus areas, in the parking lots, at night. Um, they've been everywhere at our games and our other activities. So um, thank you to the Cedar Grove police uh, for all their help as well and uh, Chief Vanderstreet for his support. Um, so. Much appreciated. So I just wanted to throw that in there, Bill. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and like I said, this is going to be a continuation of training. Uh, we're not just going to have one meeting or one training session with the teachers. This is going to be ongoing. It's going to be an ongoing function to further bring them up. Uh, there are certain teachers in the school have multitude of responsibilities as far as being, you know, wing captains and site directors or site managers at uh, athletic events. And that's we're going to do further training for them and uh, also, you know, go on more of the lockdowns and identify things and also keep tweaking and, and looking to harden the target because you know obviously the the bad guys learn from you know whatever we do if we harden one place to look to go to another so we're looking to have a collaborative effort uh, as far as you know better securing the, the schools and you know like, like I said for the most part what we're seeing is is good cooperation and 
you know, um, r real good coordination between everyone and an and open mind. Everyone's an open, and, and, you know, everyone fully understands that, you know, we could turn Cedar Grove school systems and, and you know, put razor wire up in front of all the schools and steel doors, but we don't want to do that. I mean, our kids want to have an aesthetically pleasing place to go, and we want to be able to say we, we live in a nice town, and we do. But we always have to understand that denial is our biggest enemy, okay? And, you know, that, that has not happened here, okay? That has not happened here, which I'm happy to say, because, you know, the second we say it can't happen here in Cedar Grove is the second that we're gonna fail, so. I have a question. Um, Mr. Fearon, take us through, I know at the board office, we now have kind of two security methods to actually get into the office. And from what, what I understand from Dr. Polis, that's something that we're looking at, maybe Mr. Kinney's pricing this out, now even at each of the schools. So the idea is you have the camera on the exterior door, you get buzzed in, but then you're in another holding place. And like, if you look at North End, it's just that little vestibule. And then there's another, there'll be another camera with security. Cause that's what's ha at the board office at this point. Can you just walk us through kind of the thought? Sure, one, one, of, one of the recommendations really is, uh, is a layered system where you have an initial point of entry. And whether, whether we put, you know, in North and South End, we have the luxury of having two different doors here. And, you know, one of, one of the, um, the recommendations is to, you know, better secure those doors, you know, you know Phil, because in Newtown, what happened was they, they shot right through the glass and he was in and he, they got buzzed in, but he, they were able to shoot right through, right, right inside, you know. Um, so on the initial assessment, I said there should be layered secure security, okay? And bottom line is what we're looking to do is have an initial point of entrance, even if it's outside. It's just, it's a mindset thing where, you know, you have to give show ID even before you walk into the school and then you get buzzed in again, you know? And I know Mr. Kinney is, you know, we're, we're researching right now how to better secure that inner vestibule because we don't want to just leave it glass and leave two points of entrance, but we're already making steps and taking steps and, you know, getting estimates on better securing that inner inner vestibule. But yes, that's, that's a big part and you know, like I said, if you know, if you take a look at this, um, the recommendations I have here, the the number one thing that I that I want, that I was looking for, and the number one thing that we have costs nothing. Okay, the the cooperation and the uh, collaboration between the PD and the administration, um, and and that's there. And the initial checkpoints were were the number two thing because it again, that's that's kind of a mindset thing where people have to present an ID prior to even walking so in the building. So anything just making it harder to get in? Making it harder down. and making it right. easier to get on the phone with 911. Right. If that okay, person's so not inside right. the school and you have to call a lockdown, you can call a lockdown before right. the person's even in the school. Right. That obviously, it saves time because now that person has to get through that first initial checkpoint mm -hmm. and police are already en route. And again, it's making the kids safer and faster to get to their, you know, do what they have to do as okay. far as their lockdown drills and stuff like that, right. yes. Thank you. We have a procedure. Will we have a procedure in place for new teacher hires. For example, will we have? Because right now we're going through training, but we obviously hire each school year. And will the um, each building have a procedure in place to train? Retrain. Retrain. Right now, I think that's what Bill indicated earlier, and what he was referring to is it's an ongoing training uh, idea that we have. Because wh where we want to get to, it's not only the training of the teachers, but it's the practice of the kids with the teachers. And what I explained to Bill was my, my vision of we need more and more practice and the more and outside of what the state requires us. We're doing what we need to do, but we've already increased this school year the number of different types of practices that we're having with different types of lockdowns. So what we're trying to do is have not only the PD at these bill is is there as well um, and we also have the, the fire department that's there as well so we have a lot of different people um, that are coming in that are watching this and practicing so that we can debrief I think Chris said it best at one of our meetings it's every time that we do these trainings uh, with our teachers it's debriefing with our teachers and we're finding out more and more that's one of the most important things in terms of how to improve our drills and the like. It's kind of like, uh, you know, I heard on the way in tonight, you know, they were talking about uh, the issue in Boston. And, you know, you, you never know, like Bill said, you never know, never say never. 
and the more practice you can do when they were talking about first responders uh, responding to the scene and, and, and the like and what everybody did. We want to get it so it's rudimentary like, I hate to use in my day, but you know when we did air raid drills and the like, it was a constant uh, that we constantly did and we knew what was going on. And this is the new norm now in terms of what's going to go on and so we want to make it rudimentary for our kids so that as practice goes on we can debrief, do better. You know, one of the other things too that Bill didn't really uh, talk about yet, but one of the things about the internal communications, uh, the district has also purchased all the different various walkies. Uh, I know Bill kind of alluded to it uh, when we have various wing captains and the like. Um, even when we go into a major lockdown and the like, one of the things that we're working on between the town and the board side is so that when we're on a scene, we're all basically on the same wave page in terms of communication, in terms of what's going on. So that's a, another uh, behind the scenes coordination that we're working with the uh, Cedar Grove Police Department on. And again, at the recommendation of not only the PD, but also Bill himself. So there's a lot of training yet to go on. And yes, every year we will be doing this with new teachers. It's, it's going to be a mandatory. Uh, absolutely, yeah. We, I mean, you know, again, we, when we talk about fire drills, every teacher knows exactly what to do during a fire drill because they've been doing them forever since day one. And that's the goal is to get them, okay, you know, lockdown drill, here's what we're going to do. Um, speaking on training, you know, we identified a need already just uh, with, with substitute teachers. You know, we, we did a drill at the, uh, at, middle, at the middle school, mm -hmm. and we identified the need that the substitutes didn't have the proper keys to lock the doors, but we, we fixed that need right away. And now every substitute walking into the school is gonna get a packet where they you know, are able to lock the door and get instructions with that pamphlet. So uh, you know, again, that's why, and, and that's a reason why we train, to pick out those little things and how we can do better the next time more than anything else, you know? Um, but yeah, no, you know, the, the safety aspect of it, you know, Obviously, it's necessary because uh, of the incidents. You know, obviously, yesterday we had the bombing yesterday up in uh, up in Boston, and you know the incidents like Newtown. I mean, the, you know, soft targets. They're they're the target. You know, the soft targets are really the target. You know, they're not they're not going to go after. You know that somewhere like a PD, you know, they're going to go after the schools and stuff like that. And that's why we're looking to delay their response by setting up these initial points and, and hardening that target more than anything else and training the teachers more because, you know, obviously in Newtown, the teachers did everything right. And still you had, you know, six teachers die up there too, you know, and they were doing everything right, protecting their kids. I mean, you know, um, teachers are like every other public employee, you know, and they've been, you know, lamp, you know, crushed in the press, so let's, so let's say, you know what I mean, along with other every public employee, you know, but, you know, as far as Newtown, they, they did everything right, and they, it shows that they're willing to do whatever it takes to keep their kids safe, so to give them better tools by further training and a better, more secure facility, I think it's the right way to go, personally. Any questions? Any questions? <coughs> Okay. I just want to thanks again for the You know, I was just opening up to the community as well. I normally don't, you know, at this time, but this is a, a hot topic and something that everyone is interested in knowing what's going on. So feel free if anyone has any questions to ask Mr. Fearon. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yes, sir. Really I'll be available. Your time. Like, yes, sir. Yep. I'll be available through cell phone or email also. Any other questions, and we'll stick, after, stick around after the meeting if any anything comes up thank, thank you. Thank, do, you. Do, thank you do we want to publish the report on the website before that parent meeting or is that something we want to hold off on until we do more research Which one is the, you know the report I mean that's I'm fine with it I'm mm -hmm. fine with it if you want you know I have no trouble answering any questions right. from from the parents or the public that's fine I just by don't me. know if we want to do that before the you know just something to consider before the parent or are you gonna pass them out at that meeting um, no, or do you, is this something I, you want to keep closer to the vest based on what we approve? Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. So Either just, way. we'll just. I can, I can have the report and go over it with the parents on, on right. stuff that we've suggested to do. Right. But obviously it, it comes down to, to the, to the board and, and the votes and then the school budgets and stuff right. like that too, okay. you know, right. I mean, but a lot of stuff that we did do in there is yeah, not, no, absolutely. Yep. you know, we, we, we try to come up with uh, solutions that aren't going to you know, cost tons and tons of right, money. Like right. I said, we know we can't just throw tons of money at things in order to make them better too, because uh, obviously we all have to live in 
you know, the world of budgetary constraints. So I understand. Great. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Thanks. Okay. With that, we're moving on the agenda to, um, I guess, uh, finalize the 2013-2014 uh, school calendar. So um, in our packets this week, we've gotten the final calendar. Uh, just want to open that up for discussion. Dr. Polis, is there stuff that we should um, review? Um, I gave the board, again, uh, the overview that we've talked about since uh, January on the calendar, uh, on the various days off. Uh, once the board makes any changes or approves, I will put this out probably tomorrow to our parents in terms of uh, the days off when we're starting and the like. So I didn't know if, if you wanted me to go through that again, Mr. Mandela. Um, but it's been... Uh, you know, we, we did speak with the association. I did share that information uh, with the board, too, regarding some of their suggestions. Um, a lot of it had to deal with the future, um, and we talked a lot about um, September. September is really going to be our, our busy month between um, a holiday uh, that's in the very first week of school and the two teacher in service days that are normally done when you come back from uh, Labor Day um, will be on the 23rd and 24th of September. And again, that's based upon the fact that we have to do the training for our new teacher evaluation model. And I think that was probably the, the biggest discussion that, that we had. Um, I'm sure in the future, too, um, one of the things that um, the association would like to look at is um, that we had a while back was February break, um, and that's something that the board needs to consider uh, as well. Yeah, what I'd like to do, um, you know, I just want to open up for discussion. Um, it's, it's obviously there's a lot of um, different opinions throughout the community regarding um, recognizing, um, you know, the Jewish holidays um, that we're trying to do this year. And also um, a lot of discussion regarding bringing back February break. Um, me personally, I feel uncomfortable making those decisions every year because I'm not really sure what the pulse of the community is of what um, is really important. So what I'd like to talk about is maybe putting a survey out, um, you know, for next year and the year after of what, you know, the community, the parent community is really um, most interested in, you know, what's and get feedback and we can you know maybe put it out through the students through backpacks or however it may be that we get the information or through email or all those different you know ways that we communicate and you know just keep track that it's not you know the same families voting or or giving their opinion we just have to really try to uh, dissect it and make sure that you know a family's not you know giving their opinion more than one time but that's my, pr I have a hard time deciding because, you know, again, you know, it's someone's religion and I think it's important to recognize that. Um, however, you know, uh, comments have been made that we're not very heavy, heavily popula populated, you know, to give two days off right in the beginning of, you know, this year it just so happens that it's one day, but in the future it could be two days. Um, and then again, there are people that are in favor of the February break, and there's peop there are people that are not in, feb in favor of February break. Just throwing it out there. I don't know what everyone else thought, if that's something we should do for next year and, and going forward. I think it's a good, a good idea. I think there's probably ways to do it that it's uh, more efficient than email or something, some kind of online survey that they only, everybody can log on. So, I mean, it makes it very quick um, so we can get that information quickly. So I think when we get into the spring of next year, I mean, because that's really when we talk about the schedule, I think if we can shoot it out then and kind of look at it real time, because I think, I don't think anybody's really prepared to say we should do this in lieu of this forever. I think it needs to be looked at and to see what is the priority. Um, in the district for the educators and the community with regards to that break and what other days we need off. Because we, 
we haven't had the opportunity to even discuss it the last couple of years because of construction. So what's going to happen in two years? So right. I think an ongoing dialogue annually is, I think, I think it's just kind of what we were going to have to deal with. Right. And I think, you know, I think by having that open dialogue, it also helps the community understand, you know, the things that we have to consider each year. You know, there's, there's only so many days that we can pull from, and you have to, everyone has to understand that that's a give and take. If we do the February break, then we have to pull from other, you know, areas. So um, I think it just gives them a better understanding of what it's all about. And it's not a very hard, I mean, a very easy thing to um, do each year. So I just wanted to throw that out there so maybe we can uh, look at doing that for next year's calendar. Okay, any other comments on the calendar? Changes? before we vote. Okay, with that, moving on the agenda. From the Office of the Business Administrator and Board Secretary, may I have a motion under minutes for B1 to approve the public and executive minutes of March 26th? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. <coughs> Mrs. Burke? <coughs> yes. Mr. Sakala? <coughs> yes. Mrs. Dye? Yes. Mrs. Marinelli? Aye. And Mr. Mandela? Aye. Under bills for a motion for B2, and that's um, for to certify that the board secretary, um, from the board secretary, certifies that no account line has been overexpended uh, during the month of April. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Burke? Yes. Mr. Sakala? Yes. Mrs. Dye? Yes. Mrs. Marinelli? Aye. Mr. Mandela? Aye. Under business, may I have a motion for B3 through B13? And that's um, <coughs> to approve the donation made by the medicine shop of Cedar Grove for four medicine lock boxes for the refrigerators each of the, for each of the four nurses' offices. A uh, motion to approve um, the Cedar Grove Soccer Club um, to use the Cedar Grove High School parking lot on uh, Sunday, May 19th. A uh, motion to approve St uh, Strauss Esme Associates LLP for school policy and regulations consultants at the annual contract is listed. A motion to approve revisions of the 2012-2013 school calendar to include Tuesday, May 28th as part of the Memorial Day weekend break due to unused snow days. A uh, motion to approve the 2013-2014 school calendar as we just discussed. A motion to approve the vending agreement between the Cedar Grove Board of Education and the Essex Valley School, uh, Fairfield, New Jersey, which will become a satellite full ser food service area of the Cedar Grove Board of Education. A motion to rescind the sale of one um, dual axle Parker trailer to Dan Dames. And then a motion to approve the sale of one dual axle Parker trailer to B Ocean Auto uh, Sales. It's a motion to approve the Pumptonian Food Service Agreement for the 2013-14 school year. A uh, motion to approve the cooperative agreement between the Passaic Valley High School and Cedar Grove High School to enter into agreement for ice hockey for the 2013-14 school year and 14-15 school years um, and thereupon. And lastly, a motion to accept the donation from the North End FSA to glaze the wall tiles in the gymnasium at a cost of $6,900 <coughs> over spring break. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I just have one comment on, on B6, Dr. Pulse. I know Memorial Day weekend sounds like it's so far away, but it's really right around the corner. If we approve B6, I think we should probably get this out to the Tomorrow. Community. ASAP, so right. We'll have uh, we'll have both both the uh, information on that as well as I have something ready to go uh, regarding the new calendar as well because I know I get calls and we get calls from parents regarding next school year. Thank you. And then I just have a comment on B12. Um, uh, it's it's really nice to see us starting to do this um, agreements between different school districts to uh, bring some sporting events or extracurriculars that 
um, either we may be too small to have on our own or we may not have field space for or whatever the reasons may be. Um, I'm hoping that this is the beginning of many other agreements between towns because I know we've had discussions with Bloomfield regarding uh, swim teams. So we're trying uh, different ways to do this. So uh, just wanted to point that out uh, for those in the community, um, you know, to hearing it for the first time. But this is stuff that's been going on behind the scenes for the last year, and it's, it's great to see. So thanks to the administration for uh, getting this done. Roll call, please. Mrs. Burke? Yes. Mr. Sakala? Yes. Mrs. Dye? Yes. Mrs. Marinelli? Aye. And Mr. Mandela? Aye. From the Office of the Superintendent under Personnel, may I have a motion for S1 through S8? And that's to um, approve the retirement of Joseph McBride as Cedar Grove High School Vice Principal for the purpose of retirement effective June 30th. A motion to approve the payment of Cedar Grove High School uh, project graduation in the amount of $125 for the student number that's listed. A motion to reimburse the uh, school-based volunteers for their fingerprinting expenses as per our policy. A motion to approve uh, the school volunteers as listed. A motion to approve the substitute teachers um, that are listed for the 2013-2014 school year. It's a motion to authorize attendance at the different events as listed. A uh, motion to approve the leave of absence for uh, staff as listed. And lastly, a motion to approve the appointment of Lynn DiMatteo as South End School uh, Principal for the 2013-14 school year um, at the salary listed beginning July 1st, uh, 2013. So moved. <clears throat> Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Burke? Yes. Mr. Sakala? Yes. Mrs. Dye? Yes. Mrs. Marinelli? Aye. And Mr. Mandela? Aye. Um, under contracts, may I have a motion for S9, and that's to approve the uh, contracts as listed uh, for special services for 2012 2013 school year? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Burke? Yes. Mr. Sakala? Yes. Mrs. Dye? Yes. Mrs. Marinelli? Aye. And Mr. Mandela? Aye. Um, I'd like to open the meeting now uh, to the public for comments on or off the agenda. Mr. Maroney. Joe Marlene, 7 Beverly Road. <clears throat> I have a page out of the Star Ledger, and it, it's titled New Jersey High School Performance. Uh, it seems to be the most, most of it is uh, uh, numbers of students taking certain tests. Uh, at least that's the uh, interpretation I got from it. And it's got all the schools in the state. So I just looked at the, uh, the uh, report for our state. And uh, in looking at it and trying to just maybe uh, in some way rate what we're doing and how we're doing and where we might stand in reference to competition in, in, our, in our state. And... Um, in our county, I mean uh, town, in our town. Uh, the categories that they had in this report are the total enrollment, AP test taken, uh, percent at APT uh, test uh, over three, uh, the results uh, over three. Uh, SAT and math and, and uh, reading uh, uh, and uh, uh, last one I, <laughs> I I can't read even read my own printing but it's all <laughs> the SATs the, the three SATs 
And uh, the one I, I really could only uh, in, in endeavor to indicate some, uh, op, uh, in looking at it, some a look at what our competition might be or where we stand in competition had reference to the uh, a, the uh, percent APT, uh, which was three was the passing, I think, on it. And we have um, 35 different towns that were listed in here. And I took the, uh, I guess the, four, the first nine, not for any particular reason, but just to, um, to uh, have a, 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 let's say, a dis, a di what distance to, or what, dis, di what difference there is between us in the, uh, in, and we happen to be in within that. We ended up uh, as the, uh, using that as a measurement, the APT at three, uh, and it, it came out that Cedar Grove was seventh uh, out of the 35. I just have the nine here. Uh, I think most of the other in indication was how many uh, children or what percentage or that kind of thing. But uh, uh, in looking at it, uh, at least in that one column, uh, we, uh, being in our small town, number seven out of 35, wasn't too bad. And uh, I, I'd like, and I look forward to it, I just haven't gotten to it, to sit down with the uh, superintendent and go over the other numbers. Most of them have, have to do with, I think, the number of... Uh, of uh, students that took the various tests and uh, and then see what happened. But it was somewhat, uh, uh, somewhat with pleasure that I saw, at least in, in that one way of uh, making a competition, uh, how we stood in, in our state as being in our county as being uh, number nine out of about uh, the uh, 35. I wonder if, if uh, any of the uh, board members have uh, had an opportunity to see that list and, and have any uh, comment about that. Out of the Star Ledger, was it? I didn't actually see the Star Ledger one, but uh, we received um, a report a summary of the New Jersey you know, uh, of the report card um, a few weeks back. Yeah, new performance report. The new performance right. report, is that different? No. Than what? Uh, it's the same data. It's the same data. It's the same data. Different yeah. format, yeah. Changing, right. Yeah. And, um, you know, there were some areas that we were already aware of, um, you know, where we were strong, and there were some areas that we've addressed, you know, back in the fall when we reviewed our, our scores, you know, where we had some deficiencies, you know, um, in, a, in certain areas. Um, but overall, the overall picture um, is very promising of wh where we're moving. So, um, and then the one thing that Dr. Polis and I spoke about, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Doc, is that um, the pool that they put us in, um, you know, sometimes it wasn't a, um, a, the right comparison because the school districts were much larger than what we are here. Mm. So the information is kind of uh, skewed, unfortunately, in that way. Um, but, Doc, you can add uh, more to... Uh you know, Mr. Maroney, I can only wish we were compared to the 35. Um, what happens is is that it, it, in the state's level, and I can't wait for you to come in and we'll have a talk. I'll have coffee for you this time. Um, but the, the party that we're involved with here of schools that we're compared to with our relative peer group are much larger school districts. Um, I'm, I'm not against uh, being compared to uh, similar or higher district factoring groups. I think, that's a, I think that's a great thing because I think all schools can improve. We need to improve, continue. I mean, we've shown that and we've demonstrated that movement forward. But just to give you an idea of what our peer group is, um, as much as the uh, Star Ledger put us all in with the Essex County, 
and with the 35 that I, I could only wish to be a part of. They put us in part of, uh, along with Ridgewood High School, um, Haddonfield, um, Free Living, Livingston, <laughs> Milburn, um, Manalapan, Hope, uh, Homedale, uh, Montville High School right across the way, Mountain Lakes, um, West Morris. Um, fortunately, they pulled out the Performing Arts Academies. Uh, they did that at the last minute, the Commissioner's Office did. But originally, we were w within uh, Ocean County Vocational System, Ridge High School, uh, Sparta, New Providence. I mean, these are really upper, upper achieving schools. And, you know, when you look at the comparative data, we have small graduating classes anywhere between, I've seen anywhere as low as 90, 95 to maybe as high, I don't know, Mr. Mandel, 100, 140, 140 might have been the highest right. in eight years. Mm. Right. So when you look at these aggregate numbers, we're always at a little bit of a disadvantage, but really what these reports that I'm excited about, I think it's going to go in the right direction that the state's looking at, is uh, how students grow. And that's going to be comparative to our teachers and how, and that's how our, that's part of the teach new teacher evaluation system on top <laughs> of all of it. So I think there's a good weaving of information. I think there's going to be some really outstanding um, down the road when they refine this performance report. Um, I feel very positive about uh, how, to, how to look at ourselves reflectively because as good educators, <coughs> we need to point out, like you said, the things that we are, we're inclining to do well in. And the SATs has been the proven point over the past three years where we continue to make that climb. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, there are things that we have to do by building, by grade level, uh, that we need to uh, do some improvement in. Um, and I know our teachers want to do the best and be the best at all of it. So it's going to be a different way of thinking. I said it to the board in October. It's going to be a way different way of thinking of how we're going to look at ourselves. As much as we were used to looking at the old socioeconomics of the D uh, district factoring group, you know, now the state's going to depend is going to tell you what your peer group is you know and that peer group is going to be based upon three criteria free and reduced lunches um, limited English proficient students and special ed population so unless that that um, that theory uh, is changed by the state that's that's how they're going to develop our peer group so we're always going to be in with a very um, upper echelon group of uh, schools at the high school level. Um, our peer groups with our elementary schools and our middle school, no one school is alike. Every school has a different peer group that we're compared against. Um, so that's going to be an interesting, but I think the most positive I like about it is looking at the student growth and looking how students grow between grades four um, right on in through the HSPA and, and how well we do. Um, you know, I think the second component is look, taking a look at the AP. I hope they get the AP issue straightened out because uh, we don't have any input on AP. That's a direct relationship between a state board of ed, uh, and they get the information from college board. And they made a mistake on ours, and we reported it, but I'm not sure if they, if they got that corrected or not. Uh, that hasn't been released to us yet. But there's, there's kinks in the, in the issue here. Um, but. Uh, you know, when I look at it, it's it's we're going in the right we're going in the right direction. I think the state is moving in the right direction. It's gonna it's gonna open some very good dialogue between and among educators and uh, inform the community a lot better too. I think than the the previous report cards. My opinion. Yeah, I, uh, I frankly I was surprised that we um, we were up there. At, uh, in, in competition with schools that have a, have a hell of a lot more money than we have, which uh, <laughs> you would expect uh, uh, something would happen if they use that properly. But we were we did pretty good when I figured that we were number nine out of 35, and in the, about the only thing that you could uh, make a, 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 a question about on this thing, and. Uh, we were higher than uh, Verona was at eighth, and West Orange was ninth. So uh, I took a little pleasure in the fact that we were <laughs> in better shape than they were. So, uh, but the the top 
Well, um, uh, uh, school in our county was uh, Milburn, and uh, uh, they are not a poor people down there, so they have a good deal money, of money, <laughs> and that makes some difference. I would say not; it's not a marker, but it makes a difference in what we're able to do, and when you're competing in in a particular situation like that. So, uh, tell you the truth, uh, I took a little uh, pleasure out of the fact that we were so high in there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Maroney. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I close that portion of the meeting. May uh, future meeting announcements, April 30th and April 14th, here at North End Media Center. May 14th. Oh, sorry, May 14th. I went backwards, yeah. sorry. Um, April 30th and May 14th, um, 7 p.m. will be our executive session and 8 p.m. will be our regular uh, meeting time. May I have a motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss the following, uh, to discuss legal matters relative to a tort claim. Action is not expected to follow the discussion in executive session. Public release of the discussion will occur upon completion of the matter. Mr. Mendel, may I just make one comment? Oh, yes. I just wanted to recognize that our new South End principal is in the audience tonight. I want to yes. say congratulations <laughs> on behalf of the board, and we look forward very much to getting in there and getting, getting started. So congratulations and good luck. Congratulations. 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 I wanted to say something, but I wasn't sure if we were able to since it's personnel stuff. Thing. So I just said, you know what, I'm, I'm playing it safe here. <laughs> so, yes, thank you for doing that. <laughs> um, so may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. <clears throat> Second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Burke? Yes. Mr. Sakala? Yes. Mrs. Dye? Yes. Mrs. Marinelli?